botnets come in many different shapes and sizes. Large ones, small ones, too many to count really. But today I'd like to talk about one that you could be a part of without even knowing it. We're coming out of the network closet with this one because we're talking about Gay Femboy. <laughs> to understand why Gay Femboy was unleashed, we must... We must first understand what a botnet is. A botnet is basically an array of hijacked devices connected to the internet, all controlled from one place called a command and control or C2 server. As we can see with Gay Femboy, attackers don't just try to compromise your PC or your phone, they try to compromise routers, switches, cameras, TVs, fridges, basically anything connected to the internet. Once it's a part of the attacker's network, the device is called a zombie, and the device can remain a part of a botnet without noticeably losing any functionality to the end user. So now, why in the world would somebody want a gay femboy zombie? Well, to pimp them out, of course. Most commonly, botnets make money in a couple ways. The first of which is by being someone's personal DDoS army. DDoS is an abbreviation for Distributed Denial of Service, and it's an attack where thousands of devices all send requests to a target at once, thus slowing the target to a crawl or completely crashing it. Often, for a cheap one-time payment, you can get access to a botnet full of devices that you can target towards any of your personal enemies, or just to screw with things in general if you feel like it. The second way is by sending them to the mines. In this sense, the zombies in the botnet are literally making money because they become miners and not the Epstein kind, usually for Monero. Now you're probably thinking, wait, Salty, aren't crypto miners just a bunch of GPUs all strung together? And in some cases, you're right, but different crypto is mined in different ways. Bitcoin is mined using GPU calculations, however Monero is mined using CPU calculations, which routers by themselves don't have powerful CPUs like in your computer, however thousands of them put together can immensely increase the hash rate and give the botnet owner an insane yield. So what does the gay femboy malware actually do? Well, it attacks these specific models of routers with known vulnerabilities. The vulnerabilities are somewhat old and have been patched, so if you've got one of these routers but you've updated the firmware recently, you should be okay. When the attacker finds one, they send a request to the router that includes injected code. So here we see the wget command and it's being directed to the attacker's server with a path to this mle1 file. Then we have the chmod command, which is used to change the read and write permissions of a file. And that triple seven parameter basically means that anyone has access to the read, write, and execute permissions. The asterisk is just a wildcard character, so they basically just want to make sure that permissions are changed on any matching file. Then we have the third command, which runs that MLE1 malware that it got from their server. And then it gives it the parameter ASUS, which makes sure the malware is configuring itself properly. For all the other models, you can see different parameters in this argument. And then the last command we see is the script deleting the file. RM is remove and dash RF is recursive force. So it doesn't need to ask for permissions and the argument is the file. Now the malware has effectively removed its footprints and it's just running in memory at this point. So once the malware is running, it really starts living up to its name. The first thing it does is print the word twink <laughs> with a little cat face. And then it starts snooping through your stuff. It scans the proc directory, which is a virtual file system that shows processes in the format of a directory tree. It's the Linux equivalent of Task Manager in Windows. Then it finds the locations of the executables and it starts looking for keywords that other malwares use. If it does, it immediately kills the program. This femboy is very clingy. Gay femboy has four functions, monitor, watchdog, attacker, and killer. Monitor loads a list of 47 commands and scans the proc directory. If it finds any process running any of the 47 commands, it terminates the process. It also checks to see if itself has been terminated, and if it has, it just re-executes and starts right back up again. The last thing that Monitor does is sandbox detection, to try to make sure that no one runs it in a VM or a sandbox. It does this by making sure it runs a timing delay of 50 nanoseconds, a delay way too granular for sandboxes to handle. If the timing function fails, it goes to sleep for 27 hours. Watchdog is there to make sure the malware keeps running and isn't tampered with. It tries to bind to port UDP 47272, which I'm sure is a joke for something, and if it succeeds, it knows it's the first instance. If it fails, it tries to send a message to the port on its local loopback address to see if it's already there. If it gets a response, the malware knows Watchdog is healthy. If it sends it nine more times, it knows there's a problem and it kills itself to prevent detection. Attacker is probably the most interesting function in here because this is what allows backdoor access to the router, and it's how it launches launches DDoS attacks. Apparently, the malware is a cat boy because it waits for the C2 server to send the string meow meow to open a shell. <laughs> to open a shell. If it hasn't established a connection with the C2 server, it starts looking on the internet for very creatively named domains, 
such as crosscompiling.org, ikissboys.com, furryfemboys.top, you'd think it'd be dot bottom, twinkfinder.nl, and the only normal one, 3gipcam.com. Once the connection's established, the C2 server can start sending commands to your router, and it's basically theirs. And finally, we have the killer function. Basically, it checks the system clock, and if it finds a discrepancy of over 24 hours, it assumes it's in a sandbox and terminates itself. And it also accepts remote kill commands from the C2 server as well. So at the end of the day, Gay Femboy is nothing special. It doesn't do anything fancy, and it just relies on already existing exploits and devices that aren't up to date. So not just for your routers, but for all your devices, remember to wear the proverbial condom and just always install critical updates when they come out. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you liked learning about Gay Femboy from your friendly neighborhood cyberpunk, drop a like and a subscribe is always appreciated, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.